Hundreds of Iowa firefighters, paramedics and police officers are on the front lines of coronavirus, the pandemic every day, but some are voicing concern now about their safety and the protection they have from their employer if they get sick. Joining us now is Waterloo firefighter AJ Elliott and AJ, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, you tested positive for coronavirus. You're now back on the job, uh, but it took you some time to recover. What was that experience like and what was it in, in terms of the time that you had to take off? How was that covered? Uh, you know, the, the symptoms or in the presentation of the illness was a lot of a lot similar to what you're hearing. Um, I experienced some more of the, the respiratory symptoms, but was able to stay at home um, and unmedicated. Um, it was about, took 18 days um, for me to return to work, or at least that was the calendar days that I was off. Um, so the, the recovery, you know, the respiratory side of it um, takes longer uh, just by nature of our job, just because I was clear of the virus didn't mean that I was um, fit for duty mm -hmm. um, and be able for the be ready for the physical demands of the job. OK, yeah, and I know there and here we get to the issue because there are some firefighters who are testing positive and then they, they are getting some time from their departments that's paid to cover that time off. But some are also having to use some of their own time off to come back. Uh, and I know since you all just jump into situations, no questions asked, the issue comes up that you're concerned about uh, whether you guys should having to be taking your own time for part of the coronavirus recovery, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that's a lot of, you know, there's there's several articles and stories that are out right now um, looking to the, the governor for guidance and things that, um, you know, the, the idea is that, is that we, we believe that this should be a, um, uh, like an on the considered an on the job injury. Um, you know, this is a virus, you know, this is something we're all dealing with. Um, we have, you know, extraordinary precautions that we take, you know, we have new protocols, you know, we spend hours cleaning and sanitizing gear, you know, but, you know, we still, we just, we, we're going to run into it. You know, we have to balance between, you know, environmental, you know, protection, protective equipment versus the viral protective equipment. Um, you know, and, and we're the ones that, you know, that show up to help these people out and we don't always know if they have it and they certainly don't know if they have it. You know, so the likelihood that we would contract it um, you know, on the job, it seems, you know, exponentially higher than somebody that's just living their ordinary life as they would today. Right, because some of the situations that you guys get into, I mean, you're just in a situation with people before there's time to consider distancing or protective gear and all that kind of, you're doing your jobs, right? Well, right, but our jobs entail, you know, we've, we have guidelines and we're set up to, you know, to protect for that, you know, based off call type information, you know, the way things are dispatched, you know, it's, it, it, we, we always have some form of protective equipment and that's, you know, like I said, it's kind of a balance and that's based on, you know, what we know going into it, you know, and what we find once we're on scene, you know, depending on which unit arrives first, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of variables and we just, we just don't have time to go into it, but you know, with, we are always taking precautions and those are all based by, you know, IDPH and, and CDC and all those governing bodies, you know, but w within that you just run into other, you know, difficulties, I guess. Right. So this is, it sounds like this is a discussion that you would like to start. We are first responders out here. We're doing what it takes uh, in unknown conditions. People are contracted COVID-19. You don't feel that it's necessarily right that firefighters have to take their own time off and you'd like to sort of like get this discussion started about whether this could be covered for first responders. Right. I think that I think that first responders would like to see it, you know, covered as on the job, you know, the the, the benefits that, you know, that most cities and I think that most cities, you know, and municipalities, you know, they want to take care of their people, you know, and they, and they understand the challenges. But I think that, you know, what we're mainly asking for is a unified front, you know, and kind of a standard as to how we're going to approach this, you know, like. Like in my case, you know, I was cleared from the virus, you know, but the the demands of operating on the fire ground or many other aspects of the job that we do, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, you know, you, you can't limp back to work. And and a lot of times I think that, you know, people that are going to be recovering from this, it could take longer. And there's no, you know, there, there's no guidelines, there's no standards, you know, there's nothing to protect or to, to help anybody, 
on either side of this as to when it's appropriate to come back, you know, how that's going to, you know, balance, you know, the, there already is, um, uh, so for example, SARS, you know, the original SARS, um, is, is listed under a presumptive, um, for our respiratory and a uh, cardiac, I'm going to get the wording um, wrong a little bit there, but, but, you know, the original SARS is already on the list and it is a, you know, if one of us were to contract that it would be considered presumptive mm -hmm. or on the job. Um, so I guess, and like I said, this, you know, I feel like this ball was rolling beforehand. So, and that opens us up, you know, we go through a lot of um, rigorous testing, you know, to, to check our health and maintain, you know, like, you know, just to check things, you know, we do respiratory tests and, you know, our pulmonary capacity, you know, and those are all things that, you know, once it's considered on the job, you know, now we can make sure that everything's squared away, you know, and we're not missing anything, you know, now there's, you're hearing about blood clots and, and other things in the news. And those are all things that, you know, when we're pushing hard, you know, if we're, you know, if we're doing our job, you know, something like that can pop up and it would be nice to know ahead of time instead of when you're in the middle of an incident. So sounds like a discussion that the state is going to have to ca have soon, even though there's a lot on the plate, obviously. Um, AJ, we, we thank you for joining us. Uh, you know that all Iowans appreciate the work that you all do jumping in to save us all and help us all. No questions asked as a first responder. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today. All right. Well, thanks for having me.